I'm here with Dr. Michael Hansen, and we're here to discuss how he just came from testifying in the assembly for passing a bill regarding uh, genetically modified organisms, otherwise known as GMO, and sometimes even coined the phrase Frankenfood. What we're going to speak about specifically is a case study, a recent case study, um, involving, I believe, lab rats? Okay, please elaborate on what the name of the study was and what was found. Yes, this was a study that was published uh, in October of last year, it was done by Dr. Jarek, uh, uh, Eric Giles Seralini and uh, colleagues. And what they did is they fed rats uh, some Roundup Ready corn. And that's corn that's been engineered so that you can spray more of the herbicide Roundup or glyphosate on it. So they basically did a two year feeding study fed rats at three different dosage levels of this corn and they sprayed the corn with uh, glyphosate. So they, uh, they uh, fed these rats and two years later what happened is uh, the females had many more mammary tumors. They died more, uh, they died earlier in the uh, male rats there was more liver problems and they also died uh, earlier. That study, when it came out, was very controversial. It was all over the uh, press. It was attacked as saying it's a horrible study because they said the sample sizes were too small. For a cancer study, you should be looking at 50 rats, not 10. Uh, and they said, and the strain of rats they use, these Sprague Dolly rats, they come down with mammary tumors uh, so readily that that isn't any uh, problem. Well, both of those concerns are wrong because Dr. Cirillini had uh, tested 10 rats per group. That's the same number that Monsanto used when they did a short-term feeding study and said that there were no problems. In fact, all the industry feeding studies that are 90 days, they use 10 rats and find no problems and it's okay. As, as for the strain of rat being prone to cancer, this um, Sprague Dowley rats, it should be pointed out that Monsanto did a feeding study that didn't find anything. They only did it for 90 days. They published it in the same journal eight years before in 2004. They also used Sprague Dowley rats. And in fact, uh, when glyphosate had to be re-registered in the European Union in the early 90s, the two-year feeding study they did was on those Sprague Dowley rats. So the Cirillini uh, paper I think is uh, valid and what's m most interesting is even though the press reported that the European Food Safety Authority and all these scientists trashed it and said it was a worthless study, what's actually happened is the European Commission at the end of June they put out a, a proposal they're going to spend three million euros now to do a two-year cancer feeding study using the same Roundup Ready uh, corn variety. So basically the European Union is going to do an independent version, a two-year cancer feeding study. Basically they're going to redo the Cirillini study but with more animals. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, didn't, uh, was it the FDA or the EPA that allowed the amount of parts per million for Roundup Ready to be increased because the crops are becoming more resistant? Well no, what they did is they've increased the, the allowance for Roundup because Roundup used to be a very expensive chemical. Now that it's off patent and is very cheap, farmers are using it, for example, as a burn down agent. So that means before you harvest, you can spray your crop, right? And they get all crinkly, and that makes it much easier to harvest the seeds out of there. And in turn, now we're ingesting all of these Foods toxic, that noxious... have higher levels of uh, glyphosate. And in fact, some of the uh, data is showing that the non-engineered soybeans might actually have higher levels of glyphosate on them because they're spraying... Uh, their glyphosate is now being used as a burn down agent. So there's a real concern over this increase in use of herbicides. There's been over 400 million uh, pounds more herbicides used on engineered crops compared to their non engineered counterparts, and that's in the last 16 years. And we now have there are 22 species of weeds globally that are resistant to glyphosate. 14 of them are in this country. 50%, we have 60 million acres where these super weeds are infested, 50% of the farms in this country have problems with one of those weeds. And in fact, one of them, the Palmer pigweed in the southeast portion of the U.S., there's over 50,000 acres of cotton that there's no 
herbicides left to control the palmer pigweeds, so they've had to go back to hiring farm workers to go in with machetes. Right, so it's, it's, it's basically detrimental as far as... Uh, exactly. In fact, what's happened is when we look globally, 85% of the global acreage are in these herbicide-tolerant crops, and all that's done is led to a a gigantic increase in the amount of herbicides used. Now, doctor, uh, isn't it also true that when you're using these harsh chemicals, the ecosystem, as far as the soil, also uh, the becomes soil affected? soil gets very messed up, yes. These herbicides, uh, particularly uh, glyphosate, it is actually more toxic to soil microorganisms and to aquatic organisms than it appears to be to mammals. So. Okay, Dr. Henson, I appreciate you coming by, giving us a quick synopsis of your hearing in front of the assembly in order to have GMOs labeled, mandatorily labeled in the on the state level. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you.